Okay, people. So, Eternals has now hit Disney Plus, which, boom, great. Couldn't see it in the cinema. Um, and actually, after seeing it on Disney Plus, I'm very glad I didn't. <laughs> because the thing I didn't know, there is so much subtitles in this motherfucking film. Jesus Christ. It, like, the frustrating thing is that you never know this, right? You never know. It's like, if you go on to um, some websites, it says, you know, there is the potential flashing lights. It could cause strokes and blah, blah, blah. They all, they give that disclaimer all the time. But not, this film is... 50% motherfucking subtitles, right? Because it is so much. <laughs> like there was subtitles in June, which was frustrating, but it wasn't throughout, right? It was just mainly on Secudus Secundus Secundus. And I could guess what was going down, right? But with this, no. There is a lot. And they do that thing as well. White letters on light background. People, we need to fucking stop. We need to stop. So, yeah, seeing it on Disney Plus was definitely the way to go. So, um, yeah, I, you know, I was very curious because a lot of people were saying it was terrible, right? So there was there was that coming into the film. Now let's do the housekeeping. So it was directed by Chloe Zaha. Um, she also co-wrote with Patrick Burley, Ryan Furpo, and Kaz Furpo, all names that you will, you know, recall from other Disney you know, stuff, right? It is produced by Kevin Fieg and Nat Moore. Or is it Nate? It might be Nate, not Nat. Yeah, I'm saying Nate. Yeah, Nate Moore. <laughs> We're going with that. Uh, cinematography is Ben Davis. It's edited by Craig Wood and Dylan Tichnor. Music is Ramin Dajwadi. Um, uh, yeah, let's do our cast. The cast, we have Gemma Chan as Cersei. She is one of the Eternals, right? Um, emphatic right? She can manipulate and transform matter. Uh, we then have got uh, da, 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 Icarus, who's played by Richard Madden. Um, he can fly and project cosmic energy beams through his eyes. Um, we also have Kingo, played by Kamul Nanjani, right? Um, he can project cosmic energy uh, projectiles from his hands, right? Um, we have got Sprite, played by Leah McHugh, right? So um, she can project lifelike illusions, and although, like the rest of the Eternals, she's mad old, but she looks like a 12-year-old, right? So, yeah, she's stuck in the body of a young person. Um, we then have got Fatos, played by Brian Tyree Henry. Um, he's uh, in... He creates intelligent weapons and technology. 
Uh, so there's that. Uh, we've got Makari, played by Lauren Ridloff. Um, and she has a superhuman speed. Do, do, do. Um, we've got Druk, who's played by Barry Keegan. Um, and he can manipulate the minds of others. Gilgamesh, who's played by Don Lee. He's, uh, you know, the strongest of the Eternals. Right? Super strength. Um, we have got uh, Fina, right? Who is played by Angelina Jolie. She's an elite warrior who can form any weapon out of cosmic energy. Um, we've got... Ajak, who's played by Salma Hayek, um, the wise and spiritual leader who has the ability to heal. Uh, da -da -dum. Then there is Karun, played by Harish Patel. He's Kingo's valet. Um, there's Dane Whitman, right, who... Uh, Fans of Marvel Comics will probably recognize the name. He is played by Kit Harrington, um, which is that, you know what I mean? We've got a little Game of Thrones reunion with Harrington and um, Madden up in this. All right, and um, yeah, he is a, um, a teacher at the history, Natural History Museum, and he's dating Cersei, All right, so we got them, um, I think that's our kind of, uh, yeah, I, that, that's the main ones, um, we've got the main deviant, who is voiced by Bill Skarsgård, um, David Ko. Um, voices Arashem, the Celestial. He created the Eternals. Um, and Haza Stamen portrays Ben, right? Uh, Faso, Fa, uh, Fastos's husband. And Ezzy Daniel plays Jack, their son. Um, yeah, that's the, uh, that's the main lot. Now, there are some people we see in the post credit scenes. There is two, one kind of mid and one at the very end. But, you know, I'll leave those ones for you to, uh, discover. <laughs> All right, so the gist of the film is this. Marvel Studios Eternals features an exciting new team of superheroes in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, a.k.a. MCU, right? Ancient aliens who have been living on Earth in secret for thousands of years. Following the events of Avengers Endgame, an unexpected tragedy forces them out of the shadows to reunite against mankind's most ancient enemy, the Deviants. Bum, bum, bum. So, um, yes. Now, this is, like, it's ooh, two and a half hours, just slightly over two and a half hours. It's the 26th film in the MCU, right, which is frigging crazy, you know what I mean, when you, you just think of how many films, man, this motherfucking universe has uh, taken up, right, it's pretty incredible, pretty incredible, and I mean, the, the, the big thing as well is, right, 
there's there's not really loads of flops. You know what I mean? Everything is pretty solid, right? So um, this is also part of phase four. You know what I mean? Part of the phase four in the Marvel films, which started off with... Um, man, I feel phase four started off with uh, Spider-Man, right? I mean, I, I think a lot of people will say it started with the um uh the Disney um the Disney Plus stuff, right? The WandaVision, uh Winter Soldier Falcon, you know what I mean? Loki, all of them ones them, right? But yeah, no, um I mean it also we we got no way home up in there. Um but yeah, no, I, I think it started, or maybe it started with Black Widow. Yes, yes, you know what? Despite the last Spider-Man film, book ended phase three. Yeah, after Endgame. What am I talking about? I'm rambling, people. Motherfucker, yeah, you don't care. You don't care about any of this, do you? Nope. No, you do not. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there you go. Um, All right, now. The, I think, yeah, there was a lot with this film, right? So we open up, we open up, because I think a, lo a lot of people had seen the, the, you know, the trailer, because it was appearing in front of films in the cinema, so, you know, even though I avoid those things, you saw some stuff, but I will say, it, it mainly featured stuff that we saw, like, from the very start of the film, so that was good. Right, and and we open up like five thousand BC, you know, and we see um, yeah, some ripples in the water, and a monster comes out, which you know is a deviant, and then boom, 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 the Eternals show up. Right, they show up and they fight, and all of that kind of jazz. Um, we. I uh, yeah, so we see them on a big spaceship, right? Um, you know, Asher M, he, you know, he's, he's talking to Ajak, and so we see all of this kind of stuff, right? Um, and they get their missions, you know, but then we see them on Earth with the uh, like Macedonia, like in Macedonia, fighting. And everything like that, right? Uh, which is interesting. My big thing with this is, though, right? If we're saying they've been around all this time, then I don't know. Like, because you think all of these peoples, they would, you know, ha incorporate them into their myths, their legends, right? So, there shouldn't really be the shock when, like, you know, the Avengers show up, because there would have been this talk of peoples like this in myth and legend. You know what I'm saying? Right? And it, it, I, because it was just like, it's a there's I like the, the uniforms they're wearing. They're like their suits and all of that. It's cool. But you'd think they would have maybe changed, right, throughout time. Or if they'd had Droog change people's perceptions of what they looked like so they didn't look maybe so futuristic it was just like that was just one thing that i just thought at, at, at the very start right because i'm just like huh i mean what to do all this you know what i mean yeah i mean it's a minor thing right it's a minor thing it's nothing crazy you feel me but we see all of this and we see them helping um we then kind of jump to modern times Right, we're in a bar. We've got 
you know, Cersei with um, um, Dane, Sprites, they're, they're doing their thing in London. And as they're walking home, a deviant shows up, right? So we get all of this kind of thing. Um, but I the, the the thing is with this, I think it's just how Dane reacts. It's a little bit odd to then find like to have the kind of reveal of him later on in the film. You know, because I, I mean, essentially, we don't really need Dane in this film, right? I don't, we don't really need Dane in the film, like, because you could have, yeah, basically, we could have this film without him, right? It, it, he's only there to serve the purpose of at the end for what we see, right? But that's in the post credits, it's not in the film, you know what I mean? But what he says to Cersei, and then also, right, because supposedly Sprite's been mouthing off to him, you know, um, but one of the first things he says to her is like, why didn't you help with Thanos? Right, that's one of the first, which seems odd, right? It is, I don't think that's the first thing you say, you know what I mean? Ah, it seems like, and especially again with what we find out, like we we're shown of him, there's the same thing could be asked of him. You know what I mean? It, it, it's a, it's a weird thing. It's a weird thing, and I don't, I just didn't believe that's one of the things you'd ask. But we see all of this, right? We see all of this. You know, we get Icarus turn up, which then you know, forces them to kind of bring the team back together, <laughs> as as it were, right? But we also get a, you know, a, as they're traveling, we, we go back in time, right? We go back in time and we see a lot of the things that led up to them going their own separate ways, right? So we see all of this. Which, it's, yeah, it's all right. It's, you know, it's interesting enough. But it, it, it is one of those things where you'd be like, ah, did we, I don't know if we needed all of this, you know? Um, yeah. And, and I think that's one of the big things. There's a lot of interesting stuff in the film but some of it, I don't know if we needed it. You know what I mean? Like, um, some of the revelations we find is, is, you know, this big thing happens to one of the Eternals, which leads to a lot of other stuff, right? Now, another thing is, is we, we later on in the film, we get a flashback to see what actually happened and it's a it's one of them things that like you'd think they'd been around with each other for so long you'd recognize hints of other people's powers or just from stuff that you see you'd be like hold on thingy does that so that means wait how the fuck was thingy here when mm, 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 you know but we don't get that, right? We, we get a lot of people's behavior. It, like, we see certain things shift, but it doesn't necessarily make the most of senses. Now, there is, like, it, it, it's thrown out there because we get this, uh, Kingu makes this kind of, revelation when talking to one of the characters he's just like yo i see us like you know peter pan characters and boom 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 
But even with that, even with that, it's not really, when you think about it, the justification, I don't know, seems what we learn at the beginning, you know, and then something this character says about that period of time and loneliness and all of this. So it's just like, wait, why would they do that thing? You know what I mean? Like, why would they do that thing? You know, they, it's just that. There are the, yeah, there's these things and it doesn't necessarily, you know, a lot of, there's actions that get made and you're like, uh, there, I mean, there's other ways, right? There, surely there's other ways of doing this shit. You know what I mean? Like, why would you resort to that? Well, like, not resort. Why is that the first go-to? You know? There's other things I wondered about, right, with this. I know there's a lot of wonderings and ponderings here, people. But when we see the fights, now the fights are all fun and everything like that. But you have, like, Gilgamesh is, like, meant to be the strongest out of them. But when they're fighting these deviants, it, it's not like a few shots and a deviant. The deviants are taking a lot, right? It, it seems to take a lot to put them down. But it's just like if they've, there was a time when they thought they'd wiped all the deviants. You'd be like, wait, you struggle to fight just the one. I don't believe in that you, like, how, like, I don't know, is it, when you think about all of this, because we, we, you know, as I said, you're almost just meant to be the strongest of them, like, one punch isn't always rocking these things, so, you know what I mean, it's just like, there's sometimes in the fights where one thing might knock one down, then other times it doesn't, you know, and, and it's a bit like, wait, I thought these, I thought the Eternals were meant to be mad powerful. You know, essentially they're meant to be more powerful than the Avengers. You know what I'm saying? So, it, 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 but like how we see them, the power seems to shift throughout, right? It seems to shift throughout, which is the, it's the odd thing. And it's kind of, I'm kind of also like, man, I, I'd think more of them would be able to fly than just one, right? Just having Icarus as the one, only flyer, right? I'd have said at least one other would have been out to fly. And then the other thing, Gilgamesh is meant to be the strongest, but then it's just like Icarus is the one that could wipe them all out. Which you're like, hey, like, what's the levels here, right? It's a little confusing with all the levels, but I don't also believe that like, Icarus is so powerful he can like blow up a ship, right? There's just a lot of there's a lot going on, but we don't really get base levels, you know. And I think that's the thing. It's it's difficult with a film like this because I think with all the a lot of the other films we had the introductions. You know, so before the Avengers happened, we'd been introduced to all of these characters. So we understood the strengths, the weaknesses and all of that. But with this, you don't really get it. So you're watching having to be like, oh, they can do this. Oh, but they can't do this. Wait, I thought, oh, now they're doing this. Huh. OK, OK, OK. You know what I mean? You're, you're just having to watch and kind of be like, all right, I guess that's a thing. And, oh, I, yeah, I guess they could do this and bum, 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 you know? But it, but then also, towards the end, we find other characters. And you're just like, wait, when you were talking about bringing people back together, no one mentioned this character. Why wouldn't they mention this character? You know what I mean? It, it was just a, sometimes it was a little random, just a little random. You feel me? Like, but I think one of the biggest things is well, there's two things for me here. Now it's the chemistry between a lot of the characters because it doesn't 
quite work, right? It, it's not like it's bad acting, because it's not bad acting. It's just you don't necessarily buy the chemistry, right? We don't buy that these people have been around each other for a millennia, you know? And I think that's a big thing. Plus, there's a, I think there's a certain gravitas around, like, a lot of the superheroes we see, you know, which is the thing, right? And it is played slightly differently with characters like Hawkeye, Daredevil, you know what I mean? Kate Bishop, we see that echo, right? We see these differences, but with people like Thor, there's this presence, Iron Man, Black Panther, Black, you know what I mean? There's this thing, and with, like, characters like Icarus and Droog, you don't really get it, you know what I mean? We don't really get that thing, so it's a little, you know, I mean, it's kind of like, ah, do we believe, do we buy that these people are these big time heroes? Like, uh, you know what I mean? Powers, right? That, 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 that's the big thing here. And then also, like, it's that the weird credom, what is it, the weird credom? The weird, I know, man, it, it's this illness, which does seem to come on very selectively, <laughs> which, which you're just like, wait, what? Huh, okay, all right, I guess, I guess. But one thing is, this film, oh, it looks incredible. The visuals are pretty motherfucking stunning, man. They are, whew. Leaps ahead of a lot of shit. They it looks good, just like the tone of the film, the feel of it, and everything like that. It is it, very well done. It is very well done in that respect. Yeah, and they do play around with just different themes and ideas, which hey, not a bad thing, right? Not a bad thing. Um, you know. Now, I think the, the subtitle issue is down, essentially, to um, Makari, because, yeah, that character's deaf. So, like, which is fine. As a look, I have no issue with that. It's just, fuck the subtitles, man. It's a killer. Jeez, it's a killer, you know? So... Yeah, as as mentioned before, there's two um there's two end end credits, right? One midway through, which I mean it kind of set up a a, a potential maybe a sequel or for something to carry on in maybe the Guardians or Fantastic Four, you know what I mean? It sets, it puts in play some stuff, as does the very end, right? The very end, which does seem the only reason to have Dane Whitman in the film, you know what I mean? Which the end one does kind of throw out their two potentials, two potential films, because there's a little sign there, which, I mean, they're fine, they're fun, but, yeah, I don't know, not maybe as wowza as some um, end of credit scenes, but yeah, you know, but um, yeah, I mean, Eternals, it's not terrible, Right? It, it, I think a lot of people have been like, oh, it's terrible, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to say, nah, it's not terrible. You know what I mean? I enjoyed it. But it's not as um, cohesive as other films, you know, or some of the TV shows. Like, I think maybe, like, it would have worked more as a TV as a TV show, 
because you would have really been able to explore things. You know what I mean? Like with that, with a, you know, six hours, six episodes, an hour, an episode, boom. You, you, you could really get in there and flesh things out. So maybe that would have been more of a thing. But yeah, it's not a bad thing. It's not terrible. It, it, but when you're comparing it, things like Black Panther, you know what I mean? Endgame, Infinity Wars, you know, Civil War, all of them ones there. It's not as strong as those, right? But if you enjoy the MCU... If you join Marvel Comics as a whole, superhero films, people, you know what I mean? I think you'll get a kick out of it for sure, you know? So, yeah, it's on Disney+. Plus. So, people, go motherfucking...